knowledgeable on all things dealing with human services. She's been ranking member on that committee for, I guess, as long as we've been in the legislature, which we're starting our ninth year. Well, as you can see, in state aid, Greenwich does not receive much bang for its buck, or literally, its many bucks. Our community contributes close to $600 million in revenue to the state. That's income tax, sales and use tax, and capital gains tax. And we receive about $6 million in state aid. That plays out to, for every dollar in taxes that we send, the town receives one penny. It's not a very good return on our investment. However, in the self-interest that I don't want the messenger to be shot, I hasten to inform you that your legislative delegation is diligent in applying for state and federal grants and bonding dollars. We have been very, very successful in obtaining funds for local projects like the Western Greenwich Civic Center, the Byram Schubert Library, the Greenwich Family Y, the Bruce Museum, the Boys and Girls Club, and the cleanup of the Coscob Power Plant. Greenwich has also been early and often in the pipeline for reimbursement for school construction projects. Greenwich High School and Hamilton Avenue are the two most recent. There are eight counties in Connecticut, eight, and Fairfield County residents pay 46.8% of the total personal income tax collected. Greenwich residents account for 14.1% of that. Fairfield County has long been viewed in Hartford as the golden goose. Well, in this economy, that goose may be cooked, or at least it's been singed. <laughs> Connecticut personal income tax payments are 22% lower than the same time last year. Corporate tax revenue is down 30% and sales tax collections have decreased 4%. Our job as a delegation is to impress upon our colleagues that Greenwich residents are willing to do their share, but we will not be gouged, and we have been adversely affected by the downturn in the economy as much as, and perhaps even more so, than others in the state. Fairfield County is closely tied to Wall Street, which means that a significant portion of personal income comes in the form of capital gains. And we've all witnessed in the last year and this year that markets can be volatile, and that makes our revenue volatile as well. We need to address this deficit. The deficit actually began appearing during the middle of last year, but we need to address it now and it's going to take systemic government reform. We simply cannot afford our bloated bureaucracy. Every single cost-cutting idea that Governor Rell has proposed over the past several months has been met with opposition by the majority Democratic Party and special interests. This cannot continue. My colleagues and I support making government smaller and more cost efficient. We endorse an early retirement plan, consolidating state agencies and eliminating all deputy commissioners, reducing the grants for the public financing of political campaigns, and obtaining union concessions wherever feasible. We have 96 governmental agencies in Connecticut and more government workers per capita than any other state in the union. About 29% of our state budget covers personnel expenses. We're going to have to take a long, hard look at the role of government and what is absolutely necessary to fulfill its essential mission. We are in a crisis and we need to take action. With only about three months remaining in the fiscal year, our ability to find savings is very limited and it's growing more difficult with each passing day as agencies continue to spend money. We cannot afford to sit back and wait until it's too late. And then the only available options left would be raiding the rainy day fund or raising taxes. This is just not acceptable. Thank you. And now I'd like for